Big Facebook friends, what a blessing it is to see you today. It's nice to be standing in the church today instead of in my living room <laughs> doing that. But we're just, we're glad that uh, you're joining us today. Uh, Laura is playing in the background, obviously. We're about eight minutes away from our service starting here on this February 7th, 2021. You start seeing those numbers and you wonder how is that even possible, but uh, here we are, here we are. Well, we hope that you're hunkered in uh, wherever you're watching from online uh, with a nice cup of coffee or hot cocoa or whatever your favorite uh, warming beverage is on a day like this. It, it's going to be a good day in God's house. And uh, just in the way of a couple announcements, things coming up, God willing, of course, uh, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, February 17th, is Ash Wednesday. And we're planning on an evening service at 7 o'clock for Ash Wednesday. But if, if you're watching online and you're still a little skittish about uh, getting out and mingling and, and that kind of stuff, we are going to have a drive-up communion, not communion, drive-up ashes at the front of the, uh, the church under the overhang out front. And that starts at 5 o'clock on Ash Wednesday the 17th. So if you're interested in getting the ashes and uh, a brief blessing and prayer, uh, just, just be ready. Drive up. Uh, it, it's still light at 5 o'clock now, so we'll get you here and taken care of with the ashes and a prayer and uh, send you on your way so you can get home before dark. Uh, so that will be available to all of our online friends uh, or in-person friends if uh, they choose not to be at the service for that evening. So but we're excited about that. Uh, we're planning on another uh, drive up communion as well for March if this weather ever breaks. So we'll know, we'll know more about that in the next few weeks. But welcome today. Uh, enjoy Laura playing in the background. And we will be having communion uh, during our service today. So if you've got your elements prepared, please join in with us and uh, we'll ask God's blessings upon uh, you and your families wherever you're at as you partake in communion with us today. So we'll see you in just a few minutes.
Well, good morning. Good morning. We've got some folks that are milling around and making their way in. It's good to see you here today. And uh, you get uh, you, you get those special blessings uh, for, for making the effort to, to come out on days like this. What a day. This is, what, what, a last few, what a month. What a month. Last six weeks it's been with all these different snows and stuff like that. So. We're thankful that you're here. We're thankful that you're watching online today, too. We appreciate that. and We're just glad that we have this meeting where we can make this available to you and, uh, and just enjoy fellowship one with another, even if it's uh, via a digital format. We thank God for that. The message is still the same, and God is still on the throne. Amen. All right, in the way of announcements, we're going to do a few things different. The pastor's group not going to sing this morning. We're going to put that off until next week. Uh, God willing, hopefully that'll be a little bit better day, Laura. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Kathy's got some announcements. She's stepping in for Alice today. And uh, so welcome her. Good morning. Good morning. Who woke up shivering? <laughs> <laughs> it's so great to have you here. Dabby, how is your knee? Yeah? Thumbs up. Um, welcome back. Amen. Yeah. And my girls, my little angels are here. My blonde angels. Hello. Okay, so do we have any first-time visitors shivering in here? Okay. You're just family. Our next church work day is Saturday, February 20th at 830. Be sure to check the calling card names today, which are? Uh, I'm getting there. They are uh, Debbie Snedden. June Kidner and Jerry Niemeyer are the three uh, three random names. That's why I think Char has like one of those wheels that she spins in the office, and uh, the first three that come up, those are the names she selects. So uh, that's a good deal. You know, give them a call and uh, let them know that uh, you're thinking about it. And speaking of Jerry, the flowers this week are given by Jerry and Betty in honor of Don and Yvonne Niemeyer. Revelation Bible study continues online only. We'll resume this week on January 13th. <laughs> well, okay. Was it on January 13th? Did you do it then? Uh, we, we did on okay. January 13th, yeah. Okay. Pro probably a few days from now you'll do another one. It, uh, we've, we do it every, every week, every week, yeah. Okay, good. If you know anyone beginning the new year who could use some encouragement from a Christian perspective, Please give Pastor Wendell a name and their information. Contact methods for now are telephone, email, or letter. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to lead folks to our church family. Contact forms are available in the Narthex counter. Preparations are happening for Ash Wednesday. We've got a very social distance Ash Wednesday. We're gonna use a single Q-tip on each person, so we won't be touching you and we'll keep our distance. Mm -hmm. So, so for, for those of you that you know, we will be having a service on Ash Wednesday at 7 in the evenings. For those that decide to come to the service, I mean, this is where you'll be coming, and we'll be administering the ashes uh, via Q-tip to each, there'll be a different Q-tip for everybody, so, uh, you know, there won't be any double dipping, I guess, as we say, using uh, potato chips. Uh, so we'll be doing that, and also at uh, just prior to that, from 5 to 6 o'clock, uh, anybody that wishes to participate with just the ashes only in a brief prayer, you can drive up onto the front owner hang of the church, and uh, we'll you know, roll your window down, we'll administer the ashes and have prayer for you, and uh, send you on your way home before dark, hopefully. So that's all available to everybody, so pass the word, we'll be posting uh, on Facebook here in the next week and a half or so, and... Uh, that will be our official beginning of Lent. Okay. Next Sunday is Valentine's Day. And um, what better to talk about God's love than on Valentine's Day. Amen. And Valentine's Day will be our official kickback to our youth ministry. So all of you kids, if you can come see me, we're going to have some Valentines and some treats. And um, we're going to welcome you back as, as you can come and start God's ministry again for the children. Um, please stand and stay for our congregational meeting after services today. Are we going to do that next week? It, uh, no, we're just going to pass out sheets. I think, will it, will it be the shortest congregational meeting ever, Jim? That's 
right? Okay. <laughs> so if you're not here today and you wanted to be a part of the shortest meeting ever, you missed out. Or there's still time. You could come to, <laughs> during service to be a part of that. But we're just going to dispense the information sheets with financial information and how we're doing and uh, that kind of stuff. But we always need your prayers and, and your financial support for what's going on here at the church. Uh, so, but that information will be, uh, it, it, it is available today. And five years ago today, um, you welcomed us as your legal, formal pastor and wife. So, happy anniversary to us all. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Amen. That's it. Any other announcements? <laughs> Anything we're forgetting? Do stay safe and warm, and uh, praise the Lord. All right. Let's do our call to worship. Uh, we'll start with the Apostles' Creed. I always think of Arlene Williams when uh, we do the Apostles' Creed. Uh, Stand if you're able. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now for our hymn is number 28, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Amen. Let's do the first and the third verse here of this great old hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of Sergeant had come to me. We posted this on Facebook last night, but Terry has come, and uh, she grew up in this church, and uh, had, uh, what the circumstances are, she had uh, gone elsewhere for a while, but she wishes to move her membership back, so we want to welcome Terry Sargent, and uh, hopefully she's watching online this morning. Uh, 
uh, is re reuniting and uh, rejoining with uh, St. John's UCC today as an active member. So Terry, welcome. We love you. We love your family and look forward to uh, enjoying the journey together once again. God bless you. Gabby? Okay, now for invocation. Come sing to the Lord. Come sing and praise our God. God is our strength and Savior. So come and be refreshed. As fresh water brings joy to the thirsty. And now let's do a social passing of the peace. Amen. seated. Let me get my mask on. for breakfast and blessings this morning as when, when that is able to continue. like a primer round. Kathy's officially restarting uh, the kids' ministry next week, so you just pray as we, uh, we, we slide back into that, uh, you know, that, that all will go well, and uh, we know all the kids, many, most of the kids are back at school in some capacity, so we're, uh, we're going to do the best we can to meet them at the point of, th of their needs today. Amen. Amen. It, it has been a privilege uh, these past five years, uh, officially, to be your pastor. I still remember standing out in the hallway when you guys were having the meeting five years ago, uh, <laughs> expecting something to go wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, ye of little faith, right? Uh, but uh, it, it's been good. It's been a blessing. And uh, I thank you for, for allowing us to serve with you here for these past five years. So. Looking, looking forward to who's in it for five more. Amen. All right. All right. Well, God willing, God willing, that will, uh, uh, whew, that might be a stretch, but, <laughs> but we'll just see how the Lord does and, uh, uh, and we'll go from there. But we're, we're excited about being uh, his servant and his child and uh, look forward to serving him in, in every capacity possible possible. We've been preaching to you a, a series of messages about following the cross, following the cross series since the first of the year, and this deals with equipping us for the battles that we will come across 
for this year, 2021. We, I think most of us are glad that 2020 is over. It, uh, conversations with several people, it, uh, uh, the consensus just seems to be like uh, 2020 was just one of those years you just want to throw away. You, know? you just want to throw away and, and move on and just, just be done with it. Uh, and so, so here we are in 2021. So we've got to make this year count for the Lord. We've got a whole new situation uh, in our country, uh, in our government, uh, uh, you know, our culture. Everything uh, has changed. Everything has changed. Now, depending on your slant and your perspective, that could be for the better, for, could be for, for the worse. We're not going to get uh, into all of that. But things have changed. But one thing has not changed that who is sitting on the throne of glory, and that is God Almighty. He's still in charge. He's still in control. Nothing catches him by surprise. And he still wants you and I to be faithful in the calling that he's given to us to do as a church, as individuals, as family, to uplift and glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to ask for a show of hands, and you online can uh, show your hands too. If, if you want to, or put something in the comments to this effect. Who in here has ever experienced failure? Pretty much unanimous. The ones that didn't raise their hand, I want to talk to you after service because I want to know what your secret is. Maybe they were just too cold, they couldn't get it up. It's frozen below the, the, the pew line. But we've all experienced failure in, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, you know, if I was to characterize myself, I'm not a big, I'm not a big risk taker. You know, when it comes to uh, my finances or uh, you know stuff like that. Uh, some people, you know, play the stock market and they're looking for the next best thing, the next hottest thing, and, and they want to you know get in, get out, get. I just like to, you know slow and steady. That's, that's always kind of been me. I guess that's my personality. Slow and steady. Uh, not fast and furious. Or reckless and risky or whatever. But slow and steady. But sometimes in our faith, I mean, faith is, is, is so very important in Christian circles. Faith is one of God's most important gifts to us. I mean, we think that we're the ones that muster up faith, but it is God's gift to us. Because what does Ephesians chapter 2, two, two tell us? That for by grace are we saved through faith. faith. For by grace are we saved through faith. It's not of ourselves, it's not of works, lest any of us could boast. I mean, God doesn't want us walking around saying, oh, yeah, I did this. You know, I'm, I'm really good in God's sight. I, I did this wonderful thing. I'm, I'm just so cool. I'm just so great. He doesn't want that because he's done it all. He's paid the price for our faith by his grace. And that's how he saves us from that. And he calls us to live by faith every single day. There in Romans chapter 4, we see that the just... The righteous, the ones that are his, his called, should live by faith. The book of Hebrews is filled with occurrences too. And, and throughout most of the Bible, we learn that we need to live by faith in God. But as we've alluded to, there are circumstances in our lives, there are circumstances that we may face even in this coming year, 2021, that can cause our faith to falter. What do we do? When we have a failure of faith. Well, that's what this, this Sunday, this series of messages, messages is all about. What do we do when we have a failure of faith? And, I mean, we've been, I'd say if I ask for another show of hands, you know, if you've been in a situation here uh, lately or in your lifetime where there is just a place where you go, God, I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to ask for even sometimes. Sometimes you get so frustrated, and I'm going to admit to this. I get so frustrated sometimes, I don't even know what to pray for. And so when those times come upon me, 
Rather than just throw up my hands and say, well, I just don't know. I said, you know, God, you know my heart. You know the needs. Please just, just I'm praying according to your will. Meet me. Meet so-and-so who I'm praying for. Meet them at the point of this need that you know about. Can you help us, Lord? Can you help us? And he's always there. He's always available to help us and to lead us out of, of those quandaries if we'll come to him. Now, as I was reading a little bit in the Bible this past week, I was in, in the book of Numbers, chapters 13 and 14. And I like reading about the uh, uh, Moses and Joshua and those guys as they were leading the children of Israel, you know, out of the land of Egypt. I like, you know, seeing those victories and reading about the plagues and seeing God's hand in all of them and how he, God humbled the greatest nation on the face of the earth at that time, Egypt. And God just brought them to their knees with the plagues that he heaped upon them so that Pharaoh, the mighty president of that land, was forced to let God's people go into the wilderness to sacrifice unto him. Pharaoh didn't want to, but finally God made him see it his way. God made him see it his way, and, and Pharaoh said, just, just go, Moses, take your people and go. And Moses had led the people, and Pharaoh had a change of heart. You're, you're all familiar with the story about how they came up against the Red Sea, you know, and, and Pharaoh's army was coming up on them, and uh, who knows what was going to happen, but there had been, probably been many people killed, and the children of Israel that lived would have been taken back as slaves to Egypt. God told Moses, you just strike the water. And it opened up and they went through on dry, grant, dry, dry ground. Dry ground. I mean, so we, we, we saw the miracles. We saw how God's hand was upon his children in the wilderness. And they saw it too. Can you imagine seeing those miracles and still having a failure of faith? They got to the end of the journey there. God led them out. He had promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. A land, you know, where you could dip your graham crackers in, uh, in your milk, your chocolate chip cookies in your milk, and just everything was good. I like dipping those chocolate chip cookies in there, Audrey, so that's why I threw that one in. I mean, but it's, it was good. And they were, they were excited about that. But when it came time for them to go into the promised land, a land called Canaan that God said, God had said, I will give it to you. Moses, being the wise leader that he was, he picked out 12 guys. He says, all right, you 12 guys, this is what I want you to do. This is the land God said that he's going to give to us. And I want you to go in and I want you to see all of the good stuff that God has given to us. And I want you to bring that information back to the people so that they can be excited about it. Now that's the Pastor Wendell paraphrase version. But it's spot on. Moses wanted these spies to go in and see what God had blessed them with already. He wasn't looking forward to a blessing. He knew that God had blessed them already because he had given this to him. He said he would, and God doesn't take back. Back when we were kids, you know, sometimes you'd call it, I don't know where the phrase Indian giver came, came up, but, you know, someone would give you something and they'd take it back. God never does that. He gives you something. He gives it to you. And, and Moses was claiming that promise so the spies go out, they go into the land, and they, 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 they look here, and they look there, and over a period of several days, they come back. And they're telling the people, oh boy, there's just so many, uh, there's a, the, the grapes, the clusters of grapes are like this, and, and the land is, is like this, and, uh, and we could plant crops and it would yield 20-fold or, or more. I mean, they're just going all of these glowing terms that they're talking about the land and the resources and everything, and then they get to, but... That great conjunction in the English language, but... Boy, we had a great time. We did this, and it was really awesome. But 
usually followed by, then I lost my wallet, or the car wouldn't start, and uh, we were stranded. I mean, something bad is about to happen when you interject, but... So the spies, after they got through telling all of the wonderful attributes of the land, they go, but the people are too strong, and the land is just too amazing. We can't possibly beat them. There's no way God can give us this land because it is just too well fortified. Their cities are too, too strong. Their people are too big. I mean, their people are giants. I mean, that just went on and on and on for the reasons that they could not possess that land. What did they have at that point? What did those spies have? Well, I shouldn't say all of them because two of them Names were Joshua and Caleb. They were rah rah. They were on God's team. Yeah, let's go up. Let's do it. We can. God has given it to us. Let's take it because He promised it to us. It's ours. When can we start? That was Joshua and Caleb. But the other ten spies. I've always found it curious that they don't tell us who the ten spies. They don't give us their names in the Bible. Wondered why God did that. But he gives us the two that had the faith, Joshua and Caleb. So 10 said, nope, can't do it. No way, no how. They're too big. They're too strong. They're too mean. They're too ugly. Whatever it was, we can't do it. We can't do it. And the people listened to the 10 over to the two. They listened to the ten over the two. They had a failure of faith when it came to following to, to accept the blessings that God had already promised them. The best strategy would have been just to follow God and his leading. But they chose not to. They chose not to. The prospect of difficulty caused the people to forget all of the things that God had been faithful to for them up to that point. They'd forgotten the incident at the Red Sea. You know, the waters parted, you know, and they walked through on dry ground. They'd forgotten the incident back in Egypt where, you know, the plagues came and uh, they plagued Egypt and all, this, all of the, uh, the Israelite folks were unaffected. They'd forgotten about all of that. They'd had a failure of faith to remember that God was faithful to the things that he had promised. So when we come up against situations in this coming year that we think are too big, too strong, too well fortified, too difficult to get past, we've got to understand as we look back and we see our past that God has been faithful. I was talking with Darlene Hahn, who is the... Uh, girlfriend of Dean Downey. Dean is out of the hospital, by the way, and uh, he's back home and he is doing much better than he has been with the, with the kidney issues. So we praise God for that. But along those lines, Darlene had called uh, last week ago and also Don Niemeyer and uh, a few to, to you know, let us know about Dean. And, uh, but in conversation with Darlene, what a blessing it was, because she said she was extremely concerned for his health and well-being. Concerned to the point where she wasn't quite sure he might even make it. But she said to me, he says, she says, you know what, I called you and you had the church begin to pray. And when God's people began to pray, she goes, the very next day, I saw things begin to happen. And you know, she was, and, I don't want to take credit for that. I'm not trying to take credit for that. But isn't it amazing when someone says that to you that the very next day I saw things begin to change because we took it to God. We took it to God. And what a blessing it is. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes circumstances, you don't know why. But it's good to be able to take things to God. Good to be able to take things with God. We've been praying for Todd Rubel. 
He's doing much better too, not out of the woods, but at a different hospital with a different diagnosis and things are going good. When God's people begin to pray, things, things can change because God wants to reassure us that he is in control. And the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, as they said, let's go, we can do this. And they know that, you know, God's hand of protection is, is upon us. I pray when I pray and I think of each one of you by name. I specifically ask many times for God's hand of protection upon you, your lives, your homes, your families. Because I know that there's an enemy out there. The scripture tells us in 1 Peter 5 that he goes about as a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, devour. And he's like shooting fiery darts at us. He wants to wound us and bring us down. He wants to mortally wound us. That's the enemy that we're against. This, this horrible Satan. I pray God's hand of protection upon you. I trust and pray you do the same for me as, as your pastor because it's important that we uplift one another in prayer. It's important because these failures of faith can and, and, and will come in our lives and how we meet them head on is so very important because God wants us to meet them seeking his guidance, his leadership, his direction for our lives. But but Moses and Joshua and Caleb, they knew that God, whatever protection that these folks in the land of Canaan had had, the land that God had said, I'm going to give this land to you, Israel. I'm going to give this land to you. These two spies knew that God's hand of protection would be removed from those folks and that God was going to give them, meaning Israel, the victory as they went up to possess the land that God had promised. And when God removes his hand of protection, I mean, any of us in any circumstance are fair game because we're, I'm, I'm nothing without God's hand of protection upon my life. I'm nothing without God's hedge of protection of covering over me. I cannot defeat the enemy on my own. When we read scripture, you know, such as we do in the book of Jude, when Michael, the archangel, came upon a uh, you know, confrontation with Satan. And, uh, I mean, here you've got an archangel, one of the most powerful beings to ever exist. And he doesn't call upon his own faith and his own power and his own might or anything like that. But he looks at Satan and he says, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. What hope do I have if an archangel has to call upon the power of God to rebuke Satan? What hope do I have of gaining any kind of victory? I'm going to go straight to the source. I'm going to go straight to the master. I'm going to go straight to my God so that my faith, my faith can win out. What causes a failure of faith? I'm going to give you just a couple of things here, and we're going to move on. We're going to move on with the service. What causes a failure of faith? There are several valuable lessons that we can understand as we face this year, 2021. As, as these folks in Numbers 13 and 14 faced this failure of faith in their lives. Philippians 4.13 tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. What does that scripture say we can do what again? All things. All things. It doesn't say some things, does it? That's, are, the, are the things that are convenient or the things that you want? Or, or I mean, he says you can do all things through Christ. The things that are God's will for our lives, the things that are best for, for us in serving him, that's the things we can do all things through Christ. But you know, if you're like me, and I'll admit this, I'm afraid to fail. I'm afraid to fail. Sometimes you, know, you think about, well, all right, well, I can do this or I can do that. You know, but what if it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't go the way I expect it to? What if I start this? What if I fail at it? 
I'll tell you a quick story. I was a high school kid in a shop class. These hands are not Dave Williams certified. <laughs> and we've all seen the birdhouses and all the wonderful things that that man could make. I had the great grandiose idea back then, Dave, that I was going to make my daddy a gun rack. I mean, I glued some boards together, you know, and I had the plans and all of this. That gun rack never got made. I ended up taking, he, I think he paid about $150 back in the 60s for a bunch of walnut wood that uh, uh, finally ended up as a music box that somebody else uh, made something. But I failed, failed at that, miserably failed to make that gun rack. To the point that it still bothers me, you know, <laughs> almost 60 years later, but I failed at it. We can't be afraid to fail, though, because we're going to fail sometimes. We're not always going to live up to our expectations or somebody else's expectations, but God wants us to do our best and focus our eyes upon him. Don't be afraid. Timothy tells us in 2 Timothy 1.17 that God has not given us the spirit of being timid, but he's given us a spirit of being powerful. He doesn't give us that fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What else messed these folks up back in Numbers? They, had some, they got some bad information from those 10 spies. The ten gave the congregation false information by predicting. They offered their opinion. The ten spies says, well, we, don't, we, we think that they're too big for us to, uh, to, to defeat. We think that they're too well fortified for us. Sometimes we've got to take our, what we think out of the equation and just trust God for who he is. Who he is. We get some bad information. We've all got opinions. We've all got opinions about just about everything. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are right, some of them are wrong. In the case here of these 10 spies, they were dead wrong with their opinions because God was able to deliver them. They had a failure to recall of God's past power, his past victories, the past circumstances that he delivered them from. They chose to see the obstacles rather than the victory that God had offered them. It was there for the taking. It was there for the taking. It's kind of like our Chicago sports teams these days. You know, they snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. They find a way to lose. And sometimes if we will ourselves to that point, we can find a way to lose a spiritual battle when God has given us the victory. So as we face 2021 together, don't be afraid to fail. Try. Try. Regardless of your age, regardless of your background, regardless of, of how you think you're equipped for the battle, try. Try. Focus on the Lord rather than on the obstacle. I remember one time we, we were doing one of those obstacle courses. And it was similar to what I guess they do in the Army. You know, however big that wall was, it was like a 10-foot wall. And we had to climb over that wall. And, man, that wall was big. It was big. But we had to figure out how to get over the wall. You can't go around it. You can't go through it. You had to go over it. it took two or three people putting their heads together, but we figured it out. We went over. We didn't see the obstacle as, as a final, final defeat. Whatever it is that God brings your way, not saying it's going to be easy, not saying it's going to be fun, but it's something we have to tackle or it will cause us a failure of faith as it did with the children of Israel back in Numbers. We don't want that result in our lives. Focus on the Lord. Focus on his perspective. Focus on his victories in your life. 
I remember talking to my grandpa, who has been gone for many, many years, Grandpa Clark on my mom's side. He had, and I'm not exaggerating here, he had 15 or 20 heart attacks. I mean, we were, they lived down in Kentucky. We got called home back as kids to, uh, this is it. More often, I mean, we were, the, the, the road was, was hot between, you know, north, northwestern Illinois where we lived and Middlesbrough, Kentucky there for a number of years, back and forth, back and forth. We get down there and he'd get better. He'd get better. And around the 10th or the 11th, the 11th or 12th or whatever it was, heart attack, you know, I said something to Grandpa, and he was always witnessing for the Lord. He was sharing his faith with the doctors as they would come in, and the nurses, and telling them about Jesus. And I honestly think that was one of God's ministries in his life, that he gave him those heart attacks so that he could share his faith with some of those medical personnel back then. But as a young, young boy, I said to him, I said, I said, Grandpa, aren't you tired of this? And he looked at me, he said, Wendell, I've been here before. I've been in this circumstance before, and God has been faithful. He's faithful. If you face something before and God gave you the victory, you know he's faithful. You know he'll bring you through it. And you know whatever 2021 holds for us, he's going to bring us through it. Physically, spiritually, financially, whatever it is, he'll bring us through if we'll trust in him. Amen. Do you know this Jesus today that we're talking about, the one that we talk about, the faith? Online friends, have you admitted you're a sinner? Have you believed that Jesus died for, for you? Have you called upon his name, faith believing, as the only one who can forgive your sins? All you got to do is ask. Call, and I will answer you, he says, and I'll show you great and mighty things. That's God's phone number, Jeremiah 33, 3. He loves you today. If you've got questions about your soul, if you died yesterday, are you sure you'd be in heaven today? Ask me. Ask me. Online, say, Pastor, I want to know more. We'll give you the scripture, we'll give you the verse, we'll pray with you, we'll talk to you. We'll lead you to a saving knowledge of Christ. God's Spirit is calling you, calling you that way. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so much for your patience and attention this morning. Let's stand together, if, if you're able to, to uh, page 273. Do the first and the last verse of this particular song. My Savior's love, I stand amazed in the presence. First and fourth. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned on. mentioned a little earlier here, we've got, uh, and there were three requests that I've got. Uh, Steve Becker is, is home uh, under hospice care, so let's continue to remember Steve and, and Rob and, and Terry has been, uh, <coughs> Terry Becker's sergeant, has been sitting in with Steve some of the days, I guess, as Robin uh, uh, tries to work, and so let's just remember the whole situation, the scenario there with Steve that uh, God would just give him and 
and Robin the peace, uh, his peace at this time. Uh, let's continue to remember Todd Rubel. He has been moved to a different hospital and the diagnosis has changed. He's no longer facing the, uh, uh, the extreme surgery of uh, removing you know, all of his uh, intestines. Uh, they're going, that's, that's a last case scenario now. So we're encouraged uh, with there with the medications that he is taking. And as so we said a word of praise, Dean Downing is doing well from his kidney uh, issues that he's been having. So they're just gonna try to build him back up. And uh, he's looking forward to getting down with Darlene in Florida, I believe. And she had to share with me last night that it was 80 degrees there where she was at. So I thanked her for, <laughs> for that word of praise. And uh, anyway, it's warm somewhere, right? Just. Uh, just it's warm in here today, so we praise God that uh, our furnaces and stuff are working. What prayer requests do you have today, uh, or uh, on? Uh, are you checking online, Debbie? Uh, perhaps uh, able to if you if you see any, just just belt them out. What do you have? Any hands in here today? Okay, I know Dave Williams has been having some issues with a leg. Is this a sciatic thing, Dave, or what can you share with us? Oh man. Okay. I know. I mean I've had that gout in my big toe. I uh, I understand. So I mean that's uh, that's a painful thing. So let's let's remember Dave here in our prayers. Okay. Go. Carol Blue, Jordan got engaged. Okay. Somebody leaked this to us, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll give her credit for telling us, right? Jordan and Gage, praise the Lord. All right, Dave? Uh, maybe just a few more prayers for my brother-in-law, Dale Thomas. It's already on the list, but uh, he got gangrene in his foot now. And they may have to uh, take the whole leg off because of poor sick Let's continue to remember Dale. He's had a rough go of it here lately, losing a daughter, and yeah. and now with the physical issues that are going on too. So still at Symphony. Excuse still at Symphony. Me. Okay. All right. Remember him. All right. Anybody else online or otherwise? Unspoken then by show of hands. All right. God sees those hands and hearts. Let's take a moment for silent prayer, and then uh, we'll go to the Lord with these requests uh, this morning. Father, we thank you for this day that you blessed us with. Uh, we thank you for those watching online and for those uh, who were gracious enough to be here uh, in person today. We thank you for them. And we just ask blessings, Lord, upon all the homes that are represented uh, here or online today. And Father, uh, we pray uh, as you be with Steve and Robin this morning, the circumstances there, Lord, you know, and uh, we just pray your, your peace uh, for them. That, uh, at, at, this, at this time. And Father, we uh, pray that you continue to be with Todd. Uh, we thank you for the new diagnosis and for the uh, change of the hospital venue there for him. We pray that uh, his recovery will, will continue, Lord, to go that way. We're thankful for uh, Dean's recovery. We pray that he can continue to uh, do that, that the kidneys would continue to function as they're supposed to. And Lord, just uplift him and Lord, build his strength back up. Uh, so he can be about the walk of life that uh, he enjoys. We do pray for our brother this morning, Dave Williams, Lord, and the, uh, the gout that's uh, been, uh, Lord, aggravating his leg. We just pray that, uh, uh, Lord, that medication would take care of that and uh, God give him the strength and the ability to, to, to push through. And we, we just pray for, an, uh, for a resolution to that. And Lord, also for his brother-in-law, Lord, in the circumstances, Lord, with the, the gangrene and Possibly we just pray that uh, the situation would, would improve too, Lord, that he would not have to lose the foot. Uh, but Lord, we just pray that you'd be with Dale uh, and give him the peace that only you can today. Lord, uh, you've, we rejoice with Jordan over her uh, engagement and 
We're excited that uh, she's taking this next step in her life. Lord, too, thank you for her and for the Blue family. And Lord, we just pray for each one that's uh, a part of our church today. And Father, we uh, just ask that we've got many on our, our prayer list from, from Lord, weeks, uh, weeks gone by that uh, we pray for diligently. We just pray that you continue to meet these, Lord, at the point of need. We've got several who've been affected by COVID. We've got Gail, who possibly has COVID uh, this morning. We just pray uh, for her. And Lord, uh, continue to pray for Eileen's, our, our Irene's daughter, Kim, Lord, uh, and the circumstance there where she needs housing and uh, child care. And Lord, just a safe place to be as uh, you're blessed with this new job. We pray that you continue to intervene there. Each of the unspoken requests, Lord, uh, we're thankful for and uh, be able to uplift to you. It's good to see Debbie and Mark back with us. Thank you for Debbie's recovery from the, uh, the knee surgery recently, that that has gone just, uh, just so well. We just pray that you continue to be with her, Lord, as uh, that knee strengthens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Ask our ushers to come forward at this time and receive our morning offering. Again, you're watching online. If you're able to uh, you know, drop a check in the mail as some means of support, we appreciate that. Uh, all things continue on uh, from the billing agencies and all of that. They, they don't seem to care how much snow there is or how cold it is. They just want what, what uh, they feel is coming to them. So help us out as you're able to. Ushers, would you come? Many years of
Father God, thank you again for the gift and for the giver today. Guide and direct our path as a church and as a people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. At this time, our council is going to gather. You may be seated. We're going to observe the Lord's Supper. As we've become accustomed to doing, is there anyone that would like one of the prepackaged communion cups? Just uplift your hand. All right, Irene. Okay, just anybody else? We got Irene. Anybody else? Prepackaged cup. Okay. Pry that little wafer out of there, Irene. You'll be ready with us in a minute. Come on. All right. We invite everybody who's a, a born-again Christian to participate with us. Uh, our communion is open. We invite you to participate. The, the bread represents the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for us. He asks us to, as we... Often as we eat it, we do it in remembrance of him and the sacrifice that he has made for us. Let's ask God's blessing upon the bread today. Lord, uh, thank you for this opportunity to remember. Thank you for the bread that's symbolic of your body that was broken for us. Help us as we eat it to remember you, Lord, and your sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. had broken the bread he gave to the disciples. He says, this represents my body, which is broken for you. Take eat in remembrance of me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. says in like manner he took the cup and he blessed it he said this cup represents my blood which we spill for you the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins the Bible tells us let's pray for the symbolism of the wine and the grape juice as it represents his blood spilled for us Lord God thank you again for this day the chance to be a part of such a special, special ceremony remembering your sacrifice for us. With the wine and the grape juice as they represent your blood, thank you for being willing to pay the cost for our sins, for my sins. Guide and direct our path in Jesus' name. Amen. Others? <laughs>
like manner, Jesus took the cup, saying, It represents my blood, which will be spilled for you. Drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and read our prayer of thanksgiving. In your bulletin. Together. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Others, thank you for your service today from the council. And our closing hymn will be number 346. There is within my heart a melody. 346. Do the first and the fifth. within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low fear not I am with thee peace be still in all of life's ebb and flow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus sweetest name I know fills my coming back to welcome me far beyond the starry sky I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus sweetest name I know fills my every long Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today here in person and, and online. We pray that God's blessings uh, will continue to flow upon us uh, as a uh, community of Christ here in Crown Point. Amen. All minds clear? Yeah. All right. We're going to dismiss the service and that will segue us into the, the business aspect of uh, uh, what we need to do. And uh, so just uh, if you... you we encourage you to stay if you have to go, though we, we understand that. All right, let's close in prayer. Father God, again, thank you for uh, this time of worship that we've had uh, today. We're grateful to be able to be here, Lord, after uh, not being able to last week. Thank you for the crowd uh, in person and online. Just bless our hearts, Lord, and bless our lives as, as we do our best to serve you for this year, 2021. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk with the king, be of good cheer, Jesus said, I've overcome the world. God bless you.
folks. We will see you. We're going to be going into the business meeting now. If you're a member and you need information on what's going on, just call the church office and we'll see that that is sent out to you, okay? God bless you. Bye-bye.